You're there in 2 Samuel chapter number 22. This morning I want to share just a little bit with you about defeated, a defeated enemy. No doubt many of you will recognize the image that's on the screen, the image from the Second World War battle of Iwo Jima and those men who fought so bravely and took that island after much bloodshed. And no doubt as they were raising that flag, they were rejoicing because the enemy had been defeated. Maybe Dan David finds himself in maybe that same position. He comes to the nearing the end of his life and he has had many battles. And in 2 Samuel chapter number 22, we find a great song of thanksgiving and praise because of the defeated enemy. Now, I don't know about you, how many of you have any enemies in your life? If you've got an enemy in your life, just raise your hand, all right? Well, some of you are not sure that you've got an enemy. I'm here to tell you, you've got enemies, whether you know it or not. Even if the only enemy you have is the, the, the devil himself, I'm telling you, you've got an enemy. Enemies are absolutely a reality of life. There are spiritual enemies, there are physical enemies. And so this morning, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about the enemy, but I want to take a, a greater amount of time and talk about how great our God is. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I don't care what the enemy looks like. I don't care what size or shape he is or she is. I'm here to tell you our God is absolutely greater. David had enemies. There was Saul and Absalom, the Philistines, Goliath and his brothers, the Ammonites, the Syrians, the Edomites, the Moabites, the Amalekites, Abner, Ishbosheth, Nabal, Sheba, Adonijah, Shimei, just to name a few. David had a lot of enemies. He knew what it was all about to encounter enemies. We have the enemy of self, the world, and the devil. And so we understand as well what it means to have enemies. Enemies. I'm reminded of what David was chosen to do is through the line of David that the Messiah was going to come. And I'm here to tell you, I believe the devil would do all that he possibly could to hinder that fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. But I'm here to tell you again that Jesus was victorious. Nothing could keep him from accomplishing what he had set out to do. The Bible reminds us as well in 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse 9 that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood to show to the world the glory of God. And I believe as a result of the fact that you've been called into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe without any question that the enemy wants to do all that it can to keep you from declaring the glory of God and to presenting to a dying world the person of Jesus Christ. But I know this as well, that greater again, is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm reminded of what the psalmist says about the enemy. Over and over again, the psalmist declares these things about the enemy. In Psalm chapter 3 and verse 1, they are ever increasing. We cannot believe a word they say, according to Psalm 5 and verse number 9. They are in a rage because of us, Psalm chapter 7 and verse 6 says. They stake out the place and wait for us to come along. Psalm 11 and verse 2 says, For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. The enemies are deadly, according to Psalm 17 and verse 9. They are like the greedy lion, again in Psalm 17 and verse 12. The enemies are strong and too strong for us. Psalm 18 and verse 17. Their purpose is to eat us up and, and wear out our flesh. According to Psalm chapter 27 and verse 2. They are false witnesses who breathe out cruelty. They slander us and, and take control together against us to destroy us. They are lively and strong. They speak evil of us and wish that we would die. They even try to convince us that we have some dreaded fatal disease. According to Psalm chapter 41 and verse number 8. They wear us down by constantly asking the question in Psalm chapter 42 and verse 10, where is your God? The enemy is constantly trying to wear us down. The wicked direct bitter words toward us in Psalm 64 and verse 3. They lay snares for us in Psalm 64 
in verse 5, which interestingly enough, that word snare in the Hebrew is the word mokesh, which is the same word that they use today for landmines in the land of Israel. You see, the enemy is constantly trying to lay those landmines so that you're unaware and you're stepping in the wrong place because the enemy wants to defeat you. The enemy is diligent in searching out our iniquities. I'm reminded of what the gospel says in John chapter 10 and verse number 10. The thief does what? He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. However, what did Jesus say? I have come that you might have life and that you might have it how? More abundantly. Again, the words in the Hebrew, the word for enemy or terrorist is macheblem. Those who would wound, destroy, or damage. And so we know well the enemy is there. It's lurking. It's trying to do all it can to destroy us, to ruin us, to bring us to our end. So my question to you this morning is, what is your enemy? Is it depression? Is it addiction? Is it fear? Is it failure? Is it a family member? Is it something in the workplace? Is it doubt? Is it some sin in your life? What is your enemy today? What are you facing? You know in the back of your mind right now, you you have that enemy in view. The psalmist comes to the end of his life in Psalm chapter 22, and he gives a song of great praise and thanksgiving. I want you to see how he begins 2 Samuel chapter number 22, beginning in verse number 1, which, by the way, if you go over and you read Psalm chapter number 18, you'll find an exact replication of 2 Samuel chapter number 22, almost to the very letter. And David spoke unto the Lord the words of this song. In the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of some of his enemies, no, the Bible says out of the hand of all of his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. You see, absolutely without any question, David knew what it was like to have enemies. And the Bible says that he is a personal God. I want you to see a personal God in verses 1 through 7. It's the Lord Yahweh Adonai that David is talking about. The I am that the I am. The same one that Moses met in the wilderness. It's God, Elohim, in the fullness of his power. This is the God that David is speaking of. He is a very personal and real God. David walks off the battlefield, maybe the last battle of his life, and, and he comes to the end and he sings this song to a very personal God. I wonder what kind of style he may have sung this song, and maybe it was a little southern gospel style that he sang the song, and I'm not sure. Maybe it would have sounded something like this. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. I don't know if that's what it sounded like or not. Or maybe it was a little high church, you know. The Lord is my rock and my deliverer. Or or maybe it was a little rap, and I'm not going to do rap this morning, all right? (laughs) Hallelujah. But it was a very personal song to a very personal God because God had delivered him out of the hand of all of his enemies. And I'm here to tell you this morning, God is fully capable of delivering you out of the hand of your enemies. The problems that you're facing right now, the enemy that's coming against you right now, in this world, in this time, in this place, God can deliver you. I'm reminded of what Ephesians chapter number 6 says. Listen, if you want to be delivered out of the hand of the enemy, you need to suit up. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against the enemy. But I'm also reminded that God's defeat of the enemy is also future. If we had time, we would go to Revelation chapter number 12 and Revelation chapter number 20, and we find there's coming a future time when Satan, our arch enemy, the arch enemy of God himself, will one day, once and for all, be done, finished, and ended. Now, I don't know if that means anything to you, but it means a whole lot to me. 
There is going to be no more attack from the enemy. One day he is going to be bound and he's going to be thrown into the bottomless pit forever. He's going to be thrown after a, a thousand year reign and he's loose for a little season. Then he's going to be thrown into hell forever to be done with, finished, kaput. You fill in the blank, whatever you want to say, but he's done, it's over with. The enemy is defeated. I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number one. The Bible says that the Lord had delivered him, how? Out of the hand of his enemies. Out of the very hand of the enemies. This wasn't some distant, uh, mythical event that was taking place. No, no, the enemy had David, if you will, by the throat. Have you ever felt like the enemy has got you by the throat? And you just don't know if you can shake it loose. Uh, whatever that enemy may have been, it's got you and it's got a hold of you. And David realized and recognized that it was a Lord God, a very personal God, who had completely delivered him out of the very hand of his enemy. I want you to notice how he addresses God. In verses 2 and 3, he says, My God and my Lord, my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer personal pronouns he interjects into the text telling us listen this is my God I know him very personally and he knows me very personally and he has delivered me do you know God do you know him personally by the way God is not some far off distant being he's someone you can know very well very close up very intimately and very personally how well do you know him can you say along with the psalmist David this morning, He is my God. Amen. That's like me saying this morning, and come here Katrina, and bringing my, bringing my wife up, and I can look at her, and I can say, This is my wife. <laughs> I can also say with great confidence, This is my mother-in-law. But listen to me, I love my wife. I even love my mother-in-law. <laughs> and they are very personal to me. But I'm here to tell you, I love my God more. And he's very personal to me. Why? Because there's been many times I'm here to tell you and attest to you that he has delivered me from the hand of my enemy. He is my God, my rock. He is my God and my shield. He is my God, the, the horn of my salvation. He is my God. He is my high tower. He is my God. He is my refuge. I'm here to tell you, he picked me up from the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. Did he do that for you? Hey, listen, there's been a lot of times when, when the devil has thrown his fiery darts at me and I've been too weak or too emaciated or too spiritually out of tune when I couldn't get my shield up and my God put his shield up for me he, because he's been my shield. There's been a lot of times when the enemy is attacked, David says, and, and God has been the horn of my salvation. You can almost see it, you can almost hear it as the enemy mocks and says, where is your God? Ha <laughs> ha, you believe in God, you've got to be kidding me. You really believe in that mythical being God? Come on, where are your brains? And all of a sudden, from the portals of heaven, God shouts down and says, hey, this is mine, leave him alone. He is the horn of my salvation, declaring who he is. He is my high tower. Wow, what a beautiful image and beautiful picture. If you've seen the movie Rapunzel, the cartoon movie Rapunzel, you remember the movie Rapunzel? That's kind of a cute cartoon movie. I liked it personally, all right? It says a little bit about me. But if you remember, right, there's a fortress. And on the corner of the fortresses, there are high towers. And Rapunzel lived in one of those high towers. But the concept here is this. That God is our high tower. He has us in a place where the enemy can't get to us. He's our high tower. And he is our refuge. Have you ever felt like you just needed a place you could run to? I mean, you were really weary. You were wore out. You didn't think you could 
you could go on another minute and the enemy was hot on your trail, I'm here to tell you God is a place that you can run to and he will absolutely be your refuge when the enemy is attacking. And then David says, my God is my Savior who saves me out of violence. That's a remarkable statement when you stop and think about it. He saves me out of violence. Listen to me. Understand this. The enemy is not some mamby-pamby enemy. The enemy wants to do everything it can to literally destroy you. If the enemy can destroy you mentally and emotionally, that's what the enemy will do. If the enemy can destroy you physically, that's what the enemy wants to do. If the enemy could destroy you spiritually, that's what the enemy would love to do. Destroy you, tear you apart, rip you to shreds. Listen, the enemy is violent. But my God is my Savior who has saved me from the violence of the enemy. Wow. And you can call upon him and you can call him Lord. Verse number four tells us he is praiseworthy. He is absolutely capable of saving you from your enemies. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. When the waves of death compassed me, the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. Listen to me. Life's struggles, its temptations, the onslaught of the enemy sometimes can be absolutely overwhelming. Almost bringing you to the place and you seem like you're at the brink of death. But I'm here to tell you, God is our God who will take us from the brink of death and he'll lift us up and he'll give us new wings to soar like eagles. That's the kind of God that we serve. And when you cry out to God, listen at it in verse number seven, in my distress. How many of you have ever been in distress? I mean, just been in distress. Well, what do you do when you're in distress? Really, that's what you do when you're in distress. No, what do you do when you're in distress? What? Pray. You shout out, right? If you're in bad distress, you know, if somebody's about to, to beat you up, you're going to look for some help, aren't you? I mean, if I walk down here and I just reared back and I just grabbed Chris by the neck and I just... He put up the shield, all right, all right, good job, all right, that's right. No, listen, we'd help, help, help me, help me, help me. When we're in distress, we cry out for help, and I'm here to tell you, the Bible says, in my distress, verse number seven, I called unto the Lord, and I cried to my God. When you're in bad distress, I'm, I, I, I can assure you, you're not just going to say, well, okay, I, I need a little bit of help here, God. No, God, help! help me you see and when he cried out the Bible says in verse number 7 he heard me in my distress I called and I cried to my God and he did hear my voice out of his temple do you understand that do you, do you recognize how significant that is that when you're in trouble, when the enemy is after you, when he's on the attack, all you've got to do is say, hey, God, help! And boom, he hears you. That's right. And then what does he do? He dispatches all of his power to come and be your aid and help defeat the enemy. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, you've got to look at the next few verses because not only is he a very personal God, I want you to see that he is a very powerful God. Quite honestly, the next uh, eight or, or so verses are somewhat metaphoric because it's very difficult to describe the power of God even in language. It's difficult to, to comprehend how powerful our Lord God Almighty is. I want you to listen 
to this particular text, verses 8 through 16. I just want you to listen as I, I, as I read this morning from the message. Just listen. The earth wobbled and lurched. The very heavens shook like leaves, quaked like aspen leaves because of his rage, speaking of God. His nostrils flared, billowing smoke. His mouth spit fire. Tongues of fire darted in and out. He lowered the sky. He stepped down under his feet, an abyss opened up. He rode a winged creature, swift on the wind wings. He wrapped himself in a trench coat of black rain cloud darkness, but his cloud brightness burst forth. A grand comet of fireworks. Then God thundered out of the heaven. The high God gave a great shout. God shot his arrows. Pandemonium. He hurled his lightnings. A rout. The secret sources of oceans were exposed. The hidden depths of the earth lay uncovered. The moment God roared in protest, let loose his hurricane of anger. I'm here to tell you, when God comes on the scene and he comes to his rescue, he's bringing it all. You talk about weapons of mass destruction, God's got it all in his arsenal. He's got everything he needs at his disposal to do whatever is necessary to defeat the enemy on your behalf. We have a powerful, powerful God. Take your Bibles to the book of Nahum, chapter number 1. Nahum chapter number one. Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Listen to what Nahum says. Beginning in verse number one, the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite. Verse 2, Nahum chapter 1, God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. In will not all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry. He drieth up the rivers, bash and languisheth, and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he that knoweth them and trust in him. Listen, that's the God that you serve. That's the kind of God that you can know if you know him personally. That's the kind of God who's a powerful God who can absolutely do anything and will come to your aid and will absolutely, utterly obliterate the enemy on your behalf because the battle belongs to the Lord. Listen, if you try to take on the enemy yourself and I try to take on the enemy ourselves, we're in deep trouble. I can't help but think, I I, I like the images. I think about a lot of the superheroes. You know a lot of the superheroes? The Incredible Hulk. Remember the Incredibles? You've watched the movie The Incredibles. Superman. Iron Man. Well, here's my analogy of what God looks like in comparison to them. God makes the Incredibles look ridiculous. He makes Superman look like spandex. He makes Iron Man look like the Tin Man. He makes Wolverine look like a kitty cat. And he makes the Hulk look hilarious. Listen, there is no superhero like our God. There is nothing in comparison to him. Oh, the next few verses, verses 17 through 28, talk about a God who is a protective God. In verse number 17, the the psalmist David says, I felt as as though I were drowning, and it's God who saved me from drowning. It was a strong and, and hateful enemy, but they were no match for God. God supported me when the enemy hollered the loudest in verse number 19. God delivers because he delights in our righteousness, verses 20 through 25. Listen to me. God loves to deliver the righteous out of the hand of the ungodly. He loves to do that. And he rewards us accordingly. Psalm chapter number 1 reminds us of that very thing. In Psalm chapter number 1, 
He tells us so. Take your Bibles to Psalm 1. I want you to see how this equates to what we see here in 2 Samuel chapter number 22. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, verse 4, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth the way. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For God knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I'm here to tell you, if you're on God's side, you've got all that you need to come against the enemy. He is an absolutely protective God. Oh, if we had time, we would see that he is providential. You see that in verses 29 through 46. How God is so providential in taking care of us. He's a lamp to our feet. Oh, I love verse 30. Look at verse number 30 of 2 Samuel, verse chapter number 22. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. Do you see that? Now, I don't know about you. Do we have any leapers? Do, do, we, ha- do we have any hurdlers here this morning? Anybody, anybody a former hurdler? Oh, come here, Brittany. Come here, Brittany. All right. Are, are, you still, are you still in hurdling form? You don't know? All right. Now, I, I want you to see this, all right? You've got to get the image, all right? Because... That's okay. Okay, Brittany. Here you go. All right. Okay. I'm going to make it easy for you, all right? All right. All right, now wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to listen. I want you to see what the Bible says. You see this? For by you I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over the wall. All right, run, Brittany. Go. Do it, Brittany. Go. Now, here's what we're going to do, all right? We're all just going to line up and, and run over the chair, all right? And some of you think, well, wait a minute. I couldn't possibly do that. Hey, I love it. What, a, what, an aw- what an awesome thought. Here, here's my thought behind that. I'm empowered by God to stop a speeding locomotive and to leap over buildings with a single bound. Listen, with God as my source of power, I'm better than Superman. When it comes against the enemy, wow. You think, wait a minute. Have you lost your mind? No, I haven't lost my mind. I'm just telling you what Scripture says. That, that's how big our God is. A lot of times we get focused on the enemy and we think how big and bad the enemy. Hey, listen, my God is bigger and badder. Wow. Hmm. Well, if you deer hunters, you'll like this one. Verse number 34. Look at it. He makes my feet like deer feet. Have you ever watched deer? I mean, on the side of the road, and they're down here, and then they're up there. It's like, how in the world did they do that? I mean, they just got incredible. I mean, they come to a a six or eight or a nine or even a ten-foot high fence, and they just kind of walk up to it and go, whoop, and they're on the other side. That's just incredible. Listen, that's exactly what he says. Listen, that's what God will do for you in the face of your enemy. He'll make you like a deer, and you'll leap from here to there. All those enemies in Venezuela? No, they're no match for your God. Hugo Chavez or whoever else it may be, of course, I realize he's not in power anymore, but his brother is. And I'm here to tell you, brother, the enemy is no match for your God. And I believe without any question, he's going to allow you to complete that building, and he's going to do everything that he needs you to do right there to reach that nation and that city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that's the kind of God that we serve. That's who we serve. Wow. I mean, aren't you excited about that? I mean, how many of you just want to get up and jump? Well, now, not just yet, all right? I'm not so so sure about jumping just yet. I mean, oh, you need to take time and read the rest of this passage of Scripture and see what the psalmist does to the enemy. 
The psalmist says, he beats them to dust. That's what it says. Verse 43, then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth, and I did stamp them as the mire of the street, and I did spread them abroad. I say, well, how did he do that? Did he do it in his own strength? No, he did it through the power of God. Listen, with God on your side, you can take the enemy and you can stop him. And you can stop him and you can... Well, that's, that's what I see. That's the image that I see, all right? I don't know what you see there, but that's what I see. And I kind of like that. Else we kind of just stand there, you know. Oh, here's the enemy. Oh, no. And he concludes, he concludes with this. We have a praiseworthy God. Listen, we, you, wait a minute, let's make it personal. He starts out using personal pronouns. My God, my rock, my deliverer, my fortress, my shield, my strength, my high tower. Now I'm going to praise my God. There's an old song some of you will remember the Christian group Petra. This was the song. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Oh yeah, I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth and blessed be the rock. And may the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth and blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be What kind of God do you serve? Hmm? What kind of God do you serve? Is he able? Do you know him? We talk about salvation. We talk about him, him taking us and, and delivering us from sin and, and the corruption of sin and the ruin of sin. And he's going to deliver us from, from this world and from bodily death and from spiritual death. And he's going to transport us to a place called heaven. That's all going to take place. But he is not capable to deliver me from day to day from the hand of my enemies? Wait a minute. If he's big enough to save me, he's big enough to keep me from the hand of my enemies. I wonder, do you have any enemies? How many of you got an enemy right now? It's on your back. It won't let go. It's got you by the throat. And it's about to get you down. I'm here to tell you, all you got to do is cry out to God. He is fully capable and able to deliver you from the hand of your enemy. Again, we want to thank you for listening to this message from the Ebenezer Baptist Church. If you would like other messages or just general information about the Ebenezer Baptist Church, you can connect with us again on Facebook or on the web at www.ebc1837.com or you can call the church office at 740-385-8411.